folks, Nick Donatelli, and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. Today I'll be going over a suggestion from one of you guys about bacteria replication. I'm going to be doing this using particles because I feel like that setup has other practical uses. Plus, I've seen a lot of other people doing tutorials about just using near points and solvers, so I wanted to do something different. Um, Alright, let's get into it. We'll start by creating an origin point for our sim. So drop an add node and check on one point. And leaving it at 0, 0 is fine. So next, just make a pop net and dive inside. In the source, I'm going to first change the emission type to points. Now we actually only want it to emit on the first frame. And then we're going to use our replicator to make more points. So on the birth tab, I'm going to turn constant activation to 0 and impulse count to 2. And in the impulse activation, I'm going to type $SF equals equals one. What dollar $SF is, is it's the start frame of your simulation. So it'll only emit if the start frame equals one. And now in attributes, I'm going to change it to set velocity. And we're going to do a really low variance, like 0.05, so that we just have some initial movement. Next, make a pop replicate node. And in birth, we'll again turn the constants down to zero and the impulse count to 2. And in the shapes tab, I'm going to change it from a sphere to a point so that it replicates at the exact location. And then in the attributes tab, we're going to turn off inherit velocity. And we're going to turn on add to inherited and just change the variance to about 0.25 to again just add some randomness as it replicates. So hit play and you can see we have particles continuously emitting from our originals. Now, what we want is to allow the replicator to also split from the particles that itself makes. So we're going to need to make this stream attribute match from the beginning. So we're going to type leader here. And in the source, we also type leader. Now, don't hit play because you can see that we're not going to be exponentially duplicating, which will leave you with a ton of particles. And it's just going to slow things down, which is why I'm just going to slowly go frame by frame just look at it so let's mitigate that in the replicator we have this emit from attribute option so we're going to go and set something up to control how frequent something emits i'm about to build it in vops but if you want to see how you can do the same thing using vex in a pop wrangle uh, i did that in the rendered project file which you can download on the site so make a pop vop and inside, make a parameter called threshold. Multiply that by random on the ID. And fit it from 0.8 to 1.2 so that the particles are emitting at different times now. Compare that to the age. And make sure it's set to greater than. And bind export that to an attribute which we're going to name split and now on the outside i'm going to set our threshold to 0.8 the lower the value here the more frequently it's going to split since it's kind of dependent on age now in our pop replicate if you type split attribute in the emitter uh, i'm going to hit play and you can see that it still grows rapidly this is because of two things so the original particle still exists after the split meaning that it keeps duplicating every frame once it hits one Plus, here in the pop replicate, the copies are inheriting that split attribute, meaning once they, as soon as they're born, they have a value of 1. So it's just adding more and more. So first delete the inherit attributes so that they don't start at 1, and it'll go through and actually recalculate uh, the split attribute based on their new age. And next, we're going to kill the original uh, particle using a pop kill. So if you enable the rule, you'll see it already has this dead set up. So I'm just going to hit enter, bringing this down to the second line and hit tab. And then on the first line, I'm going to type if parentheses at split equals equals one, close the parentheses. Then you do an open bracket, uh, enter after the dead, hit backspace to start the line. And I'm going to do the close bracket and then type else, and then open that bracket. Hit enter, hit tab, dead equals zero, semicolon. Hit enter, 
again, go back to the beginning and do one last close bracket. So this is just a basic if else statement saying to kill the particle if the split value is equal to one. Now we're getting a ton of movement. So let's try to contain that in the sim. First, I'll do a pop wind just to give it some air resistance and maybe bring up the noise amplitude just a little. And next I'll do another pop pop at the end, adding the position to the force and binding that out to the force. And now I'm just going to do a multiply on the position, make a constant and setting it to negative one so that it's pushing inwards. And then highlight another input on the multiply so that we can increase the force on the outside. And I'm going to set it to four. Now, if you hit play, you can see that we have them swirling around the center. Now, next I want to avoid collisions. So I'm going to drop a pop interact. What this one does is it detects particles nearby and applies a force to push it in the opposite direction. Hit play and you can see that they're moving. Now, the last thing I want to do is just kind of tame the whole thing down so that they still move away from each other and try to stay contained towards the center, but it's really slow. So I'm going to make a pop wrangle and just type V at V to access the velocity. Just but times equals zero, semicolon. So this is saying that the velocity will get multiplied by zero, essentially just setting it to zero to stop it. So now you can see that it's not coming to a complete stop because you still have forces and velocity that's being applied each frame. So it's calculating that before it actually sets the velocity to zero, but it will reset the velocity after each frame so that it's not adding more and more as it goes on. If you wanted it to completely stop, you could do some kind of setup where it hits an age of something, or maybe when it hits the split group, uh, the velocity and the forces are all multiplied by zero. And maybe you even grab the position and tell it to hold it there. But we're going to call this good for now. And now we're done with our sim, so I'm just going to make a sphere and set it to a scale of 0 0.035. And then do a copy to points. Checking on packed. And there you have it, our quick particle based bacteria growth. This actually came from a setup I used on a real project uh, where we were showing cell division and we had different rates of growth. So we could show the difference between regular cell growth and cancer cell. Um, so this actually is a practical setup. And as always, would love to hear from you in the comments if there's any effects you'd like to see tutorials for in the future. Uh, the project files for this are on the site. Hope you enjoyed this one, and until next time.